So forget logos. So my account here, I did take a moment to fill in my picture information. Um, I borrowed some graphics here. Now, uh, I didn't have my company logo to put here, but I, I put a picture of a product. And then over here, I found a rectangular image that will fit here. So this one's a square, that one's a rectangle. Um, again, now looking at it at a glance, or if I go over to my profile, you can all look at this right now. If you go to the address, twitter.com slash victorsbakery1, you know, that's my address that exists. You all can look at it. You all have an address like that on Twitter. That was the username. You can always check what your Twitter address is by clicking on your icon there on the top right and going to View Profile. You will see your profile, your address, which is just your username, twitter.com slash your username. Now, I put in here some graphics about my business. It's going to be up to you to decide what is going to be a great picture for, for you. Um, you might show off your product. You might show off your team members. You might show off um, you know, your, your, your business, uh, your building, or whatever. There's no wrong answer here really, but the wrong answer, however, is to not put anything here. This is a spot for branding that you should take advantage of. Let me see if I can find you another example over here. Okay, look at this one, twitter.com slash CNN. <clears throat> CNN has their logo right here, and then at the top, they have a very clever way of branding to show we're also on Instagram, we're also on Snapchat, Facebook, Vine, and Twitter. Maybe I don't know that that's Vine, I don't know what Vine is, but for those that know, they're on Snapchat. Let me go follow them on Snapchat. These are not active clickable links, they're just a graphic. How do you make this? I can't really get to it in this class. It's a graphical effort. I have to open up my graphics software like Photoshop or some graphic software and put together graphics at the right dimensions. We know the dimensions at least, 1500 by 500. And once I know what kind of canvas I have to work with, then I can design my graphic. But get inspiration from these different uh, these different uh, accounts you know if I if I have followed these accounts or it's suggesting to me well if I take a quick look at Apple their branding looks like this they've got their logo and their newest product uh, it's not the full-sized version of their new phone it's a little close-up of a piece of it think in those terms also what's visually interesting all of the social media is going to rely a lot about visual interest I go look at Taylor, Taylor Swift. This is a, a terrible graphic, actually. The person she's got working for her on this should be uh, reprimanded. That's a good photo. That's a good photo of her. But that, that's blurry and dark. I can't even quite see what it is. Um, let's see who else. Arizona Diamondbacks. I'll go look at that just randomly. OK, they've got their logo. Looks nice. And then their location. The photo could be better. Those palm trees are kind of in the way. Let's see, even big names don't quite perfect it. Let's see the Astros. That, that's a good one. Their logo right there looks good. And then an action shot of a great game. So how often would you change that? There's no right or wrong answer here because actually a lot of people are not going to see it that often. They're going to see your logo much more often. Okay. People will see this graphic if they choose to go to your profile but they're going to see that one every time because whenever you tweet something, your logo will be attached to it. So for visual interest, it's just something interesting, but you don't really have to change it that often. Um, this one right here could be changed because people will see it more, but be careful about that because people will say, who is this account I followed? I don't remember following. They remember that logo that they've seen and if you've had that logo for a while and suddenly you have a new logo, they're like, who's that person? Unfollow. So you're going to shoot yourself in the foot if you change your logo that often. So that's something you'll need to do at a certain point. Put yourself a little branding to be legitimate. Then the actual content that you share. So let me, let me tell you uh, also one of the biggest secrets here, how to get followers. <laughs> So remember, all of this, all of this section is how to get followers. But here's here's a big secret. 
post good content. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> let me put that in. Let me put that in quotes. Actually, good content. Okay, this glib answer is that the content that you're going to put is what's going to entice people to follow you. And we have the options of putting, of posting, text, photos, videos, sounds links. We can post a lot of different kinds of things and on pretty much every network we can do this. So <clears throat> that's not then really a big, big, big secret. Um, the, the trick to it is post content that your audience cares about. If I'm running social media for personal purposes, uh, then I can put whatever fun, weird, crazy thing I want f to make myself laugh. And then other people might see it and they might like it. Okay, but for a business, you have to think first in terms of the potential customers. If I share this picture, will a customer like it? If I share this link, will a customer like it? If I share this video, will a customer like it or react to it or be interested in it? And as a beginner, perhaps not thinking in, that, in those terms, that might be difficult what do I share that my audience will like? The good news is you don't have a limit on tweets. Uh, you can post you know, 10 tweets a day, 100 tweets a day, you can post 1,000 tweets a week um, in theory. Uh, the point is that you can post whatever you want and therefore you're going to figure out what your target audience is. Because I can tell you that in general the target audience on Pinterest is women, and in general I can tell you that the target audience on Google Plus is men, but that's not to say you won't find every demographic on every network. It's just that what are you posting and how are you interacting to find that audience? We have more to talk about, of course, but here, these are different things that I could possibly post. Question? If you have a client who wants to give you like a good review, would that client um, post on your Twitter page or would it be something that you would tweet that the client said? If you, want to, um, if you want to take advantage of clients' good reviews, I would have them post on Yelp. You're not really going to have people post positive reviews and such on Twitter or any social media, really, except Yelp. That's the one that's going to be much more effective. Yes? Is it possible to send out too much, too frequently content so you annoy them? Yes, that's the flip side of it. Don't post enough and no one pays attention and then you don't have an audience. Post too much and you're flooding people and then they don't want to follow you anymore. So there's a balance in there somewhere about too little and too much. And I can't tell you, seven is the magic number. It's going to depend on your audience, your brand, your product, and a bunch of factors. We have the ability to post these kinds of content, but we have to think in terms about what will your audience care about. Um, we can say what your audience cares about or what will they react to. because we have the reactions or interactions or conversions of a like, reply, <coughs> retweet, I'm going to get to it in just one moment. So, nope, this class is or every level, so I'll be covering every thing. Like, reply, retweet. In this order of importance, a like is simply, you know, someone uh, liked, uh, you know, thumbs up, heart, whatever the network calls it. Uh, you will see below people's tweets. Um, like this one from Food and Wine. These homemade takeouts, takes on takeout are almost too easy. And below, you will see the icons on Twitter of a heart. On Facebook, it'll be that thumbs up. Or now they've introduced new ones like the wow face and the angry face and all of those things. But there's some interaction, there's some reaction of a like. Uh, this is, you know, a form of approval. Someone approved of, someone liked your post. It's good that you post something, people like it, you'll see a number. 12 hearts, 12 likes, 12 people liked it. 
The next level is the reply or also a comment. Someone took the time to press the reply button right there and say something. Maybe as simple as a great or thumbs up or something more complex like thank you for sharing this, I'm gonna go buy it. You know, a comment is any reply to what you've posted on Twitter or any account. It shows more seriousness of a follower. Because a like, it, I've got it as the lowest level there. Not that it's bad, it's just so transitory. I see something, I like it, I move on, what's next? I find something else, I like it, I move on, what's next? The next level then is the reply. I have to take a little bit of brain power to click reply and write something. I may write, great but still someone took the time and effort to interact a little bit more. We'll see why that's valuable a little later, but commenting is that. The next level, also known as a share or a reshare, is this icon here, where it's basically sort of like a copy and paste. I saw this picture from Food and Wine. I liked it so much, I'm going to retweet it. I'm going to share it to more people. I'm going to have more people see that. These are things that I can do to people's tweets, and these are things that can happen to my tweets. So if I'm sharing pictures or videos or links or whatever, I'm thinking in terms of trying to get likes on the tweet, trying to get replies on the tweet, trying to get retweets on the tweet. If I'm on Facebook, I'm going to think about posting a video that will get me a like or a reply or a share or whatever. On all the networks, I'm trying to get these actions out of my content. Yeah? You said you could post videos on um, Twitter. Is hmm. there any kind of time, like, time limit to the video? There is, and they're changing it all the time, so at the moment I, I'm not sure what it is, but I believe it's up to a minute. Okay. But I think they've changed it to a little bit more time. They're kind of experimenting with lengths. Mm -hmm. It used to be just like 30 seconds, and now they're increasing it. Okay. There's actually a fourth and higher interaction. Can anyone possibly guess what's the most valuable interaction? Follow. The follow is the highest interaction. Building that audience. Captive audience. I have one follower right now so one person is paying attention to me. I want 10 followers for 10 to pay attention. I want 100, I want 1,000, I want 10,000 followers. A lot of people are going to pay attention. 1% um, are going to be the ones that are really going to interact here because with food and wine, they have, if you hover over anyone's icon, they have 4 million followers. They're following 686, and they've tweeted 43,000 times since the beginning, since the beginning of their account, yeah. So from Food and Wine, 4 million followers. Let's see who else. Fox 5 San Diego, they've got 124,000 followers. They've got lots of followers, but notice if you look at their content so far, because this was only tweeted eight minutes ago, they've only got... Uh, one like and two retweets. Let me go back in time some more here if we're looking at uh, another food and wine. Um, this one's got 11 likes, eight retweets. It doesn't unfortunately tell you the number of replies. I would like them for, the, for them to do that so at a glance I can quickly see that. But it only tells you about uh, likes and retweets at this point here. No, any account that exists out there, you can just like, reply, or retweet. I'm not following the Milwaukee Brewers, but I can go to their account and like any of their stuff, reply to any other stuff. So Twitter is, is one too many, whereas a network more traditionally like Facebook is one-to-one. -one. If I'm on Facebook, I request someone to be a friend, and they say yes, 
we've both requested the connection, we've both agreed to it, we, we'll both see our, each other's stuff. On Twitter, someone can choose to follow me, but I don't have to follow them back. Whereas on Facebook, traditionally, I follow someone because they follow me, one to one. Here I can have many followers, I don't have to follow them back. One to many, yes. How do you prime the pump? I just created an account. How do, you, how do I, who's going to see that and how am I going to, if anybody can look at it, looks like they want to like How am I going to get followers? Well, it's what we're talking about here. We're going to go into more detail also. I'm giving general ideas and then we'll get a little bit more specific. But again, um, yeah, this is the thing. We want followers. I want 300,000 followers like the Brewers. We're, we're getting to there little by little. Um, so this is leading to toward one of the ways where uh, this is related to you get what you give. Get what you give. If you give likes on people's content, you can get some likes for your content. If you reply to people's content, you will get replies if you retweet, if you follow, because all of these actions cause a notification. It tells the person, Victor's Bakery liked your photo. So that other account becomes aware that I exist. Right now there's about 320 million users on Twitter. No one knows I exist. So as I start to like people's stuff, retweet people's stuff, follow accounts, they will become aware that I exist. And therefore they may like my stuff, they may reply to my stuff, better yet, they may follow my account. So, give to get so that other accounts become aware of you, so that they may like, comment, uh, like, reply, retweet, follow you. Uh huh. It's people and businesses and governments. Everyone's got a Twitter. Everyone's got a Twitter. Three hundred twenty million. Three hundred twenty million accounts. You're actually, yes, exactly. That's that's the next level. You hit it exactly. If I keep replying and, re and retweeting food and wine, they're too big to care about me. They've only followed 686 out of 4 million that have followed them. So those accounts are too big. Ellen DeGeneres is not going to follow me back. I wish she would, but she's not. The chargers are not going to follow me back. I wish they would. They're too big. You've hit upon what we will look at uh, about other people, yes. But the general idea is be active to be known to then be followed. So if I'm saying you give what you get, and that's going to give you back some result, the downside is John Legary, CEO of T-Mobile, is probably not going to follow me back. So we want regular people or businesses to know that we exist. So here's how we do that. We couple what I'm saying about give what, give what you get with search. Take advantage of search. Every network has a way to search within the network. If you go off to Google or Yahoo or Bing and search a search engine, it searches all over the internet on that keyword for everything all over the internet. But within Twitter, I can search only Twitter. Within Pinterest, I can search only Pinterest. Within Facebook, only Facebook. 
and therefore my search is a little more targeted. So I'm going to take advantage of search. <coughs> search keywords of on topics, search keywords about what your business is to find people, aka customers, to interact with. Interact is the shorthand for like, reply, retweet, follow. The interactions, the reactions. We'll do that right now in a moment. We are going to search, we're going to use the search feature to find potential customers. I want them to know I exist. So I'm going to start interacting with potential customers. This is one of the reasons I really like Twitter. The filter between you and a potential customer is very low. There, there is no filter between you and a potential customer as much as there is on Facebook. When we talk about Facebook eventually, we'll say, and I'll say from the beginning right now, full disclosure, personally, I hate Facebook. I don't like using Facebook personally, but for business, I love Facebook. We'll get to why later. But Facebook is, it makes it actively harder for a business to reach an audience. We'll see why later. Twitter, no boundaries you can reach a customer directly for free on Twitter. When we get to Facebook, we'll be able to reach an audience, but unfortunately the big secret for Facebook will be that you'll have to pay to reach an audience. I want to scare you, that's why we'll be doing Facebook day three. But for Twitter, here's how you reach your audience. Do you see the search box on the top right corner? It's always there. Not to search, be careful, not to search on your web browser, but to search in Twitter, where it says search Twitter, Right here you can type in any single word or phrase, keyword, topic about what your business is. My business is a bakery. I can search bakery. Maybe cupcake, maybe cookies, maybe vegan cookies. Let me try that. I'm going to search for vegan cookies. It may be giving me suggestions. Ignore those suggestions for the moment. Just type a keyword or phrase and press enter. Ignore the suggestions. I'll get back to them later. I'm going to search a keyword or phrase. We sell vegan cookies, let's say, at Victor's Bakery. I want to find customers that are interested in vegan cookies. This search is very powerful, very useful. The results give me top results, live or up to the minute results accounts on Twitter about vegan cookies, photos about vegan cookies, videos about vegan cookies, and other options. For the moment, I'm under the top view. It's suggesting a couple of Twitter accounts related to vegan cookies. Notice that Bakeology has the keyword vegan cookies in their bio. So that's why you want a bio that's filled in, perhaps with some keywords that people might search for. You might appear when people search the keyword. You only have 160 characters, so you can't write a whole essay there. You have 160 characters. Zagora, helping, helping our 1 million fans be healthier, happier, and hotter, award-winning health and fitness brand, seen on, etc. We love vegan cookies, and it gets cut off. But they've got that keyword in their biography. Think about that. And then results. Girl Scouts account. They tweeted, good news, both our bakers make vegan Girl Scout cookies. Meet the cookies. And then Pomodoro e Basilico says, matcha cookies this Sunday at whatever. Vegan. Carl Cox. On and on. Now because it is such a public forum, I apologize if anything not safe for work appears, but it is a public forum. Uh, but anyway, I'm seeing a lot of results of vegan cookies. Spooky Vegan tweeted. Uh, Abby Bayatpour tweeted. Joe Elphick tweeted. Jennifer Esposito. The Jennifer Esposito tweeted. And it's the Jennifer because she's got the little blue check mark. That little blue check mark means it's the official real person. If you ever see these check marks, it's the official representative. If I can go create a Twitter account right now and call myself Jennifer Esposito, the full name, remember full name is not unique. The app name is unique, so she's Jennifer Ways Jamie. Yes? How did she 
get the check mark to verify how is it verify that she was indeed the verification the verification process unfortunately is pretty much reserved for big names at the moment so if you've got thousands of followers you can you can most likely get verified but if us starting off with 10 followers or even like 200 followers we're kind of too little for twitter to verify us yet um, so there's other companies that are using these keywords and there's people so right here, Ryan, me and Gracie made vegan maple bacon cookies. This is a regular person. I can hover over there. Um, I can hover over their picture and see their information and their followers and all of that. And the point of this, I'm searching, but then I'm going to like, reply, retweet, and possibly follow. Possibly I want to follow Ryan. Ryan will get the notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. Ryan then has the options of seeing that notification and saying, great, and moving on with their lives. And I don't get the follow back. There's the option that Ryan could then go to my account and like my stuff. There's the option that Ryan could reply to some, to one of my tweets, and there's the option that Ryan could retweet one of my tweets. Well, at the very least, I'm going to make them aware that I exist, so I'm going to give that like. Yes, to a random person on the internet, I will start to interact. You have to do this. You have to break out of that thinking about, oh, it's a stranger. Well, they're interested in a topic or keyword of your business. Why not reach out to them? Especially it's free, unfiltered. You're going to search here. You're going to find people. Ryan got the notification either on his phone or if he's logged in. He tweeted this back on September 5th. But he got a notification either if he's logged in or on the phone. And the notifications appear up on the little bell up here. This is a notification for me, not for him. Just ignore it for the moment. But Ryan got a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. Ryan can then say, okay, what's Victor's Bakery about? They click my logo, they go to my profile, and they see this. Oh, I like that. Follow. Best case scenario, the follow. Worst case scenario is they give me a like and move on. Well, not really worse. Worst scenario is they do nothing. Or scenarios they do nothing. Lowest level scenario is that they like because the like is just transitory. They like something, they move on. Yeah, you don't have to pay for Yeah, I'm gonna make this totally fake, but I'm gonna act like I'm a real business and then I'm gonna delete it at the end of the day. <laughs> For the moment, for educational purposes, I am a bakery. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what else. Who else? Um, if I look at live tab at the top, in theory, then the, the latest tweets will appear based on that keyword. Nine minutes ago, the Vegan Society tweeted this. I may or may not get a follow from, you know, a big company. I, I don't know. They are following, if you hover over, they're following 7,000 and they have 121,000 followers. Oftentimes, when a company or a person has a lot of followers but not as many that they are following, they are probably not going to follow you. They have chosen to just follow a small amount of people. If instead you hover over an account and you see they're following 7,000 and they have 1,000 followers, it probably means that they're prone to following people they might follow you. So try to see accounts where the following number is higher than the followers number. 121,000 are, are following them, but they haven't followed that many people comparatively. I don't know, I might be 7,724th. Or maybe not. I don't know. Yes? And in that example, where are the inspirations and where are the inspirations? For this particular person? Um, oh, right. oh, for this company? Um, I, I don't see the conversions and impressions for that company, really. I suppose I can say 
following and followers, 7,000 conversions, and 121,000 impressions. I could kind of count it like that, but really we count impressions and conversions for myself. I tweeted something, how many rep re replies did I get? I shared something, how much result did I get? So impressions and conversions are more for me rather than checking on how other people have succeeded. Or how do we get the CTR? How do we get the CTR? Um, that was over here when we look at analytics.twitter.com. Once we actually have been using Twitter, we can go to that screen and that will tell us impression, impressions, conversions, uh, CTR, and so forth on that screen. Um, okay, so. Whenever you follow an account, that means you've chosen to see their tweets. So, if a person is tweeting 40 times a day, you're going to get flooded with 40 things. So an account might not want to follow every person because out of you know, 7,000, that's probably at least one tweet per day. 7,000 tweets are coming into their inbox every day. So it's too much to handle. So, B tweeted something related to vegan cookies. Um, on any of these accounts, again, I can give a like, I can give a reply, a retweet, or I can follow. Let's say I've chosen to follow B. So I followed. Now what's happening here is I've chosen now to see all of her tweets. These are her tweets, her tweets. So she's tweeted 19,000 times since she started Twitter. I don't know if she does it once or 10 times a day. So now on my home screen, I'm going to see I'm going to start to see her tweets. There's one right there. So I'm going to start to see her tweets on my home screen and if I've got the app and I'm logged in, I'm going to start to see her tweets. That's the follow. So I'm following accounts and I'm going to see their tweets. Now, the point of me following was to let her know I exist. Why not follow me? The downside, of course, is this one particular tweet about this topic is on topic, but what about every other tweet is about things I don't want to see, or things that I don't care about, or things that are offensive to me. I've chosen to follow and see all of that. I can easily unfollow. They get a notification when I follow, but they don't get a notification when I unfollow. And they don't have to approve your request to follow them? No. If they're a public account, which all Twitter accounts are by default, you can change it to private. But by default, if you follow, they don't have to approve it. They can block you after the fact. They can, you know, prevent you from seeing their account. But by default, you can follow any account. You don't need approval. That's why it's one-to-many, as Facebook is one-to-one. -one. I have to approve to get connected to that old high school friend that I don't really want to connect with. So any of these interactions up here result in a notification. Question. I have a question on that note. I'm not familiar with it. So I just saw a page of a high school friend that I haven't seen in 30 years. Mm -hmm. how, how did that happen? Depending on how you filled it in, depending how you filled it in, you may have put your, you know, your real name in your bio. You might have put information that uh, kind of identified you to some degree. And Twitter, because 320 million people use it, a lot of people fill in information. So you might have filled in information that Twitter saw. Oh, this kind of information matches up with this information. This high school, this person put this high school. This person put that high school, and maybe it recognize that and recommend it. Here's someone you may know. It's kind of smart, actually. It's scary in a way. Yeah. So you might have a very unique name and um, someone else for whatever reason. I don't have a full answer about how exactly that happened. It's just interesting that it did, but it seems to be pretty smart, for better or for worse. And it kind of figured out to some degree who you were and then suggested you to other people, vice versa. So any of these results create a notification to the user to let them know that 
that I exist except for the unfollow. Except for the unfollow, the unlike. Notice you can click the little heart to like it and you can say never mind and click it again to unlike it. They don't get that notification. Now I say that however, don't abuse it. Don't like, just don't go through the whole screen and like, 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 and then later on unlike for whatever reason. Um, that's kind of a spam tactic, and uh, Twitter would notice that and say, why are you doing this spam tactic? Are you a spammer? Let's shut your account down. Why are you following 200 people and then a day later unfollowing them? That's a spam tactic. Let's shut you down. So don't do the tactic of simply following a bunch of accounts and later unfollowing them. That could get you into trouble. Follow an account that you do want to connect with and see their, see their tweets. So therefore, it might not be the best tactic to simply go here and hover over B, follow. Hover over Tamika, follow. Hover over uh, Trinidad, and follow. It might not be a good idea to just follow, follow, follow. You want to first check out their account. And again, if anything weird happens, it's a public forum, I apologize. But I'm going to go to an account and see what they're tweeting about and Captain Morgan Crunch and cats and stuff, and I can decide to uh, follow or not. And so, again, the, the danger of following accounts is that you've chosen to see everything that they're tweeting. So I would say be judicious, be, um, be careful with your follows, follow accounts that would be most beneficial to you, So that's why they, they order in this importance. Yeah, your likes have a value, but they're not as much as a follow. Once you start doing that follow, that's like a big endorsement that you want to follow, see their tweets, like their tweets, you're going to see their tweets. So these are the accounts that are ongoing, and you dislike them, they still stay on there, the old ones. They'll go away eventually. The screen will refresh eventually, and when you've unfollowed them, those tweets will go away eventually. But right now, because the window's still open, I guess, it's still showing it. Okay. Delete what? Your tweets or their tweets? If you unfollow them, you will stop seeing their tweets eventually. You can't delete anyone else's tweets, but you'll stop seeing their tweets eventually, most likely when you close and open the window. On your own tweets, yes, you can delete your own tweets, but not anyone else's. But other people will see the other person that will follow? Yeah. If I uh, followed Anne-Marie, people can go to my profile and they will see the button that says f follow following. People can go to my account and click my following link and they will see everyone that I follow. So again, another way, another reason to perhaps be judicious about follows. Um, I can do that to Jamie Oliver. I can go to Jamie Oliver. I can then see who is Jamie Oliver following. And I want to see a list of all 4,000 accounts he's following. I can even see who has followed him. 5 million followers. I can go to this account and see a list of 5.5 million accounts that have followed him. Notice all of these are spam. Lena is probably real, but all of these others are spam. And that's Complete your profile to help you get followers so that you don't seem like a spammer. So this is the cool this is the cool thing and perhaps the negative thing about Twitter. You can always see someone else's following and followers, but now people can see your following and followers. So again I'd be Careful, then, if you're just clicking follow, 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 to build an audience that way, people can see that. And if you do get real followers, people could see them and not really poach them or steal them, but they'll see who is there, and later we'll see how we can take advantage of that as well. 
Right now we're, we're on the tactic about um, using search as a keyword to build followers based on interacting. Before we get too deep into that, however, we've created an account and it looks nice, but I don't have anything else to show for it or anything else to entice people to follow me. If I said I'm going to like people's tweets, if I'm going to reply to people's tweets, and I may get back what I give, well, I don't have anything. I don't have any tweets yet. I don't have any tweets for people to like. I don't have any tweets for people to reply to or share. So before we get too deep into trying to get followers, we should actually create some content. So people always want followers right away, but I have to say, don't try to get followers right away unless you have content, unless you've tweeted, unless you've posted photos on Instagram, unless you've posted something on Facebook. Don't try to build followers if you have nothing to entice followers. That pretty picture is not enough. The tweets, your content, is what will really entice people to follow you. So we'll get some practice with tweeting here. Because we have basically the, the catch-22, the chicken or the egg question. Should I get followers first or should I share content first? If you try to get followers first, you have no content, you'll get no followers. Why would someone follow a blank account? If you have, if you're trying, if you're sharing content first, again, uh, who's paying attention? If you don't have any followers, and I'm tweeting every day, no one's paying attention. Yes, there's 320 million users, but none of them are following me. So I'm tweeting all these great photos and coupons and ads and links and videos and such. No one's following me. No one's paying attention. That could be a way, definitely. That's why we want to fill in a bio, and people might find us that way. Yeah. Um, so we have these basic two options, because that way is only going to take us so far. We have to be active. So that's a little bit of a passive way. It's valuable to put the keywords in our biography. It's a little passive. We want to be more active. We have to figure out here. Do I want to try to do the techniques that I'm talking about to build followers, but I have nothing to show for it? That's going to not work. Or do I want to post stuff, but no one's paying attention? Am I wasting my time? No. I'm going to say the way that you want to do this is to share content first. Yes, you're going to talk to an empty room. Yes, you're going to talk to yourself. You're going to talk to no one. You're going to tweet something to no one, but that's to build content so that when someone decides to go check out your account, they may actually follow because you've got good content. So we'll say advice. Share content first. Then try to get followers. And this works on any network. Twitter right now, obviously, but when we get over to YouTube eventually, same thing there. You want to share something on YouTube, you want to put a video on YouTube before trying to get followers on YouTube. You want to post something on your Facebook before trying to get likes on Facebook. It kind of sounds obvious once I say it, but it's not that obvious for beginners. People often want to get followers right away, but you have nothing to show for it. Yes? If you're posting um, your content on Twitter, is it something that you should pretty much just automatically also post on your Facebook as well? We'll say, as a beginner, it's okay to cross-post, that's what that is there, which is share the same thing to all your networks, all your platforms, all your accounts. As a beginner, that's good to get started off. As you get advanced, it's not as good. As we get more advanced, it's going to be better to post something different on each network. Yes, it's going to be double the work, triple the work. I will show you websites that will help you manage multiple accounts at once on different networks a little later. But 
eventually you're going to think about posting different things on different networks because if you're posting the exact same picture on Twitter and Facebook on Instagram, how are you going to get your Instagram users to follow you on Twitter? Why are you going to have them come from Instagram to Twitter if you're going to see the same thing on Instagram? I'll just stay on Instagram. So, yes. So what's a good number when you're starting on Twitter for followers to kind of see that you will be on the beginner point? Like if you have a thousand or what's kind of the ideal number? There's no ideal number, but any number besides single digits <laughs> is going to help you. Even you know, even a hundred triple digits, even a hundred, it's going to depend on so many factors. So there really isn't a number, and don't worry about that too much because it's going to be your content. If you're sharing good pictures and videos and such, it doesn't matter that so far you've got seven followers. That's going to build. And if you, even if you've got 700 followers, some people are going to say, I don't care about that content. They won't follow. People, most people don't make a decision to follow another account based on how many followers they have. It's about the content that they're sharing because I'm going to see it whenever someone posts something new. Victor, didn't you also say that uh, if someone follows you on Facebook, then they're not usually following you on Twitter or yeah. uh, the other social media? Yeah, um, a person is following you on Facebook most likely because they they know how to use Facebook. They like they like Facebook. You're probably not going to get them to follow you on Twitter because now I have to learn something new. If you're over on Instagram and you want to get them to Facebook, I probably won't get them into Facebook because they know Instagram. They like Instagram. They want to stay on Instagram. Now that's not 100 percent. You will get some people that follow you on different networks because of what I'm saying here. If you post different things to each network, okay, I guess I'll also follow you on Instagram and Twitter because you're posting different things and I want to stay in the loop. So posting the same thing everywhere is not too much of an enticement to get people to follow you everywhere. But posting different things on every network is a better way to get people to follow you everywhere. It's triple the work. It's quadruple the work. And as a beginner, don't worry about it. Share the same thing on every network. That's okay. That'll give you some cachet and some audience that you're building, but eventually to get more effective we want different things on different networks. One shortcut though is same picture, different text. We will be able to share a picture or a video on any network. And it's okay if you use the same picture on Twitter and Facebook, but the text description that goes along with the picture should be different. So same enticing uh, picture of a cupcake, but then below it on Twitter, I'm going to say, use this coupon on our website for 10% off, plus a link. And on Facebook, I'm going to say, share this cupcake picture five times for a coupon next time you go to our store. So same picture, different text or description. That's a good shortcut. That's a recommendation instead of the exact same thing everywhere. No, you want every direct and indirect topic or keyword about your business. You don't know where your particular audience will be found. So if you're only using one particular keyword over and over, you're limiting yourself to your audience because people would still be found by those other keywords. So if I can put together a list of like five keywords, ten keywords that I'm going to search for, maybe this week I'll spend a couple of minutes today to search one keyword and interact with people. And then next week I'll think of a different keyword and spend another five or ten minutes 
searching. And then next week, and then next week. Now, if I do it much more often, this hour I will search for this, and next hour I will search for this, and next hour I will search for that. Well, you're just playing the numbers, you're reaching more people faster. So think of all of these keywords about your business. Doesn't matter if it's, you know, the end result or whatever you had said, it's all good. Search for all of those terms and you'll find an audience. And is there an LIGL for better for reviews? Um, mm -hmm. Twitter is best for what? Let's do a quick detour here to talk in general about demographics of these networks. I do have to say the caveat, which is uh, that this is um, general terms, but this is not to say you will not find your audience on any network. You will, these, uh, these networks just skew toward these audiences. Pinterest. Studies show that this is most popular with women. So if you're trying to reach a female audience, Pinterest might be your starting point. We can, of course, find lots of women to market to on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. It's just that the demographics seem to skew more toward women on Pinterest. Google Plus, that one seems to skew more towards men. If you're really looking for a, a male audience, perhaps think about Google Plus, but I can find a male audience on Pinterest. I can find a male audience on Facebook. It might be easier to find these audiences on these networks. Twitter is quote unquote young, whatever that means. But a younger audience, a younger audience is what you might find easier on Twitter. Again, you'll find every age range. But the bell curve shows that, you know, the you know the 18 to 30 year old young is that demographic on Twitter, maybe even a little younger than that. But you'll find 30 plus, 60 up, uh, 60 plus, 70 plus, in even lower, although you have to be at least 13 years old to use Twitter. Most of these networks, you have to be at least 13 years old. Uh, so if you know, uh, you know, if your kids are 10 years old and they're on Twitter, I'm going to tell on you because they shouldn't be on Twitter that young. Pinterest, Google plus Twitter. Uh, we're also going to talk about, f um, well, I'll get to Facebook in a moment. Uh, we're going to talk about YouTube eventually. Let me get back to YouTube in a moment. Uh, we're also going to talk about LinkedIn. This one uh, is uh, male or female, but this is professionals. Or serious people. Those that are trying to find a job or build their portfolio or find uh, you know services if I'm a lawyer LinkedIn could be very useful for me much more than Twitter if the audience is young um, talk about Instagram this one seems to be skewing toward uh, young women um, And young, perhaps, is the more operative word. But women, young women, but young, again, is going to be there. Um, that might be an easier audience to find and cultivate on those networks. Um, YouTube, that one is young male. That one's pretty male dominated on YouTube. And again, whatever young is. Um, of course you can find someone that is interested in setting up a retirement account for your, from, from your CPA business. Of course you're going to find you know, a second time home buyer uh, if you're a realtor on YouTube. Of course you're going to find who you're looking for on all of these networks if you look for them. But these you're going to kind of stumble upon them a little easier. And then Facebook, everyone. the Facebook demographic is everyone. Everyone's using Facebook, for better and for worse. We will see, I don't know the numbers at the moment, but something like Pinterest has about like 200 million users. Google Plus, that one ranges between 200 and 400 million. That stat is hard to come by. 
Twitter, they'll tell you 300 million users. LinkedIn, I think that one's at about like 400 million. Uh, Instagram, they just crossed 500 million. So now they've got more people on Instagram than LinkedIn. Uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, than LinkedIn and Twitter. YouTube, that one's got like 800 million users. And Facebook has 1.6 billion users. Wow. So a thousand million users. 1.6 billion. The population of the world, 7 billion, 6 billion or something. So lots and lots and lots of people all over the world use Facebook. They count that. They count that. That's why that number is so big. Uh, and that's why like a number like Google Plus is pretty much a range because Google counts people that have a Google Plus and a Gmail. Right. So it's a big oh, number. Gmail. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what about children? Which one? <coughs> what about children? Which one? Children. 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 Oh, children. Um, that one's always tricky because uh, I don't really have anything to say about that, unfortunately. The companies that I've dealt with never don't market to children, so I don't have much to say about that. There was one, but it was kind of hard for her to, to market because children is always difficult because you need to be 13 years old, you need to have a parent's permission, you have to be careful how you market because you can't tell as many lies to adults, to children as you can to adults because of the laws and such. It's complicated. I don't have much to say, unfortunately. But yeah, there's a YouTube for children's version and there's other networks focusing on children and we can go look up an article that lists 200 more social networks and one of those is going to be about kids uh, so for your for for all your information if you search for list of all social networks you will find some article most likely on Wikipedia where it will list a table of like 200 social networks you've never heard of and what their demographic is. It hasn't been updated very recently because there's so many networks out there, but there are networks that focus on spe such specific demographics. There's this network called Nextdoor. Is anyone on Nextdoor? Nextdoor is a social network for your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Only you and your neighbors next door can get into that network and gossip about each other. <laughs> no one else. I just joined it and it's really cool. <laughs> For several years, yes. It was that you get a Gmail account and you automatically get Google+. Google+, Plus didn't quite take off as much as Google would have liked, so they started to detach it from these systems. So nowadays, if you create a Google a Gmail, you don't get a Google+, Plus automatically, unless you ask for one. It could be, yeah, that's why it's such a range here. It might be lower or higher for various reasons. Facebook has been around since about 2004, Twitter from 2006, YouTube I believe is also 2006, Instagram 2013 I think, maybe 2012, LinkedIn, I think that one's been around kind of a while, 2003 I think, Google Plus 2011, I have to look up all of these so don't take my word for it completely, I think also 2011 or so. So do you have, do you have a, an edge on Google Plus because you don't have that Google search engine? Exactly. That's why we'll be talking about Google Plus next time. One of the big edges about Google Plus is Google Plus is so tied into Google search, and Google search is the biggest search in the world. So we're going to see why it behooves us to put our business on Google Plus because when someone searches a local business on Google search and you get a nice little graphic and ratings and all that stuff, that's Google Plus. We'll, talk, we'll cover all of that next time, Google+. Plus. So all of these numbers are interesting and you can show them off and impress people. But all of these numbers and such don't matter for every single person. I can use Facebook and find a young female audience. I can use Google+, Plus and find that professional audience. This is just that in general, overall, these are what the demographics are, but you can always find who you're looking for. It might be a little harder on one network compared to another. But all these tactics that I talk about, specifically search and other tactics that we'll talk about, 
help us find the audience we're trying to find. And then if all else fails to find your perfect audience, the final secret to get followers. We still have more secrets that I'll tell you, of course. The final secret is there's two kinds of paying for followers. One is the bad way, one is the good way. The bad way is that you simply buy a thousand followers. That's bad because those followers are fake. They're spam bots. They're not going to buy your product. They're just going to show, I've got a thousand followers, which is worthless. I would rather have ten real followers than a thousand fake followers. That number is really meaningful only to my ego. You want real followers. So to pay for followers is not good. Paying for followers. No benefit, really, but people fall for it all the time. And if anyone has done it here, I apologize, but you may have been fleeced. You don't want to pay for followers. It's just going to inflate your number that you've got 10,000 followers. But none of them are customers. None of them are going to buy anything or click even a like. They're just going to be a number that they followed you. Paying for followers is bad. Paying to get your content seen by real people is good. That's the good part of paying. You can pay for your tweet to be visible by more people. You can pay for your Facebook post to be visible by more people. And when we get to it later, we will specify these target audiences. I can say 18 to 25 year old female San Diego. I can target my tweets, my Instagram photos, my Facebook posts. I can target it directly to who should see it. And therefore, the 20 bucks that I spent on that tweet will, re will result in a $200 sale. Therefore, that $1,000 that I spent on Facebook advertising results in $5,000 in sales. So I know a lot of us, when we hear, pay to tweet, pay for Facebook, unheard of. No, you want to do that at some point because it is very effective. It targets the right people to hopefully increase your conversions. We'll be talking about, most of the time, the free aspects of these networks, and they work. They just take a little longer to work. And then when you take out that credit card and pay for more visibility and such, that works much better. But you're paying. And you could pay as little as $1 to reach 100 people. I have zero followers. I pay $1. I could get impressions of 100 people. Not exactly 100 conversions. We'll get to all those details. But let's start to think about this. When we get to Facebook, we're going to hit this harder about paying to use social media effectively. Because with 1.6 billion follow people on Facebook, you're a needle in a haystack. In a haystack. If we want to reach the right people, we need to pay for it. That'll be day three. But all the networks have some ability for you to pay to get your content viewed by more people. Like right here. I didn't follow Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch popped up. And actually, I am interested in that. I'll click. Whatever they paid for that, paid off. Um, so you see, what we're talking about, we're getting close to the end of the day of Twitter, but whatever we're talking about Twitter and what I didn't cover, I will cover it in a variation on Google Plus and Facebook and Instagram. They all have these concepts, likes and follows and search and all of that. They have their own specific concepts, like I'll talk about hashtags now. Hashtags is a very Twitter thing, but all the networks have hashtags to some degree. And it is a lot to process and such. But remember, I'm recording these lectures. You can watch them whenever you'd like. You need to send me an email, which is in the syllabus, to request the videos. And watch this over the weekend to try it out. Do it. When we come back next Friday, we'll talk about another network. Before we wrap up, we'll talk about one more thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of items over here uh, under your icon under settings. You're going to see at the very bottom of the first setting, deactivate account. So yeah, I made this account up. I'm going to delete it before I leave. And you can delete or create as many Twitter accounts as you want. And that's hidden under the settings. Just go to your icon there, settings. And it's the last 
item. It's really small and nondescript. They don't want you to leave, but it's there at the bottom of settings. Question. Okay, so I found something. Um, I found an unfair enough to be adversely like the articles not so much, but the picture is really powerful. Can you take parts like that, or does it have to be, like if I were to say just a photo and use it on my Facebook page, or can I do that, or? Someone else's photo, or your own photo? Someone else's, but refer to it, not take it and not use it as mine, but refer to Well, this, um, this, leads into the bigger topic of content. Use as much as possible your own content. We have easily the ability to retweet, which is sharing other people's stuff. We have the ability to you know, copy and distribute other people's stuff. It's very easy in the digital world, and it's built into these networks. I can retweet, I can share other people's stuff with the click of a button. But I would recommend, as much as possible, use your own content, your own photo. Because when you retweet someone else, you're helping them. Yeah. It's their photo with their logo, it's their content, their product. And you're giving them free advertising, and that's nice. But I want free advertising. I want my own retweets. So I'm going to shoot my own photo of my project, or my cupcake, or whatever, and tweet it and Instagram it, and I want other people to retweet my stuff. So it's not going to benefit me if I'm retweeting other people's stuff. It's benefiting the originator. I'm going to be an originator. I'm going to be a content creator, so my stuff gets shared. It goes viral and helps me. Question. His hand was a little higher, faster on the draw. Yes. Um, just going back to the deactivating the account, mm -hmm. when you deactivate, are you freeing up that ID, or do they just it somewhere? It does free it up. When you deactivate it, there's still a 30-day grace period that within 30 days you can log back in again and your account is still there. 31 days later, then it gets fully deleted and that name gets freed up again to be used by someone else or yourself later on. And you can change it whenever you want. You can change it too. Question. I was just wondering about the percentage of retweeting and tweeting. I was thinking that retweeting was encouraged to as much as possible retweet other people's yeah. to some degree the point of the retweet is to again make them aware that you exist once they follow you okay it's less incentive to retweet them oh. but uh, if we want some numbers 20% repurposed content versus 80% original content so it's okay to you know retweet other people's stuff share other people's stuff not too much, though, because you want your own stuff. You want your picture, your video, your link, your hashtag, uh, so that then other people can share that and help you build momentum and get more activity. LinkedIn, I do LinkedIn, and a lot of people who want to expose themselves as experts in the field, they do really, they do really Reshare. Re yeah. To some degree, they are using some percentage of this. It could go to 50, 50 percent, and it can go to 80, 20 percent. Sure. But it's also a, it's also a different medium, a different target audience. Yeah, you're gonna see. This is not. I shouldn't say that this is the this is the number one rule for this. This is a suggestion. For some people, it may work to repurpose more stuff, and for some people, it may be more original stuff works for them. Yeah, that's why we're able to do it as much as possible for free. Give it a shot, and you know, today I'm gonna put my today my plan is to tweet five things, and one thing will be someone else's tweet, and four things will be mine. Or this week I'll have a goal of I'm gonna post my own thing, and next week I'm gonna post someone else's thing. There's no minimum and maximum number of posts. It's very open ended, but what I want to say maybe to start off as a beginner. Um, at least once per week something new. Share something. A photo this week, a link next week, uh, 
text next week, whatever, at least once. You're going to see that as you get comfortable with this, it'll be no big deal to do one tweet a day, maybe. Maybe two today and one tomorrow and nothing for the rest of the week. That's okay. There's no wrong answer of how much. The only wrong answer is nothing. <laughs> not using it. Creating the account and not using it for a year. That's the wrong answer. Everything else is right. Once a week, once a month, I suppose. Once a day, better. Twice a day, even better. Look at all of these accounts that I've been following. Bon Appetit shared this 23 minutes ago. And then if I scroll down, I'm sure I'll see some of their other stuff. Food and Wine, 43 minutes ago. Bon Appetit, 55 minutes ago. Obviously, they've got a team of people sharing, and you are the only person on your account. That's why this can be a full-time job, and that's why once a week is good as a beginner. So the interface here, the home, the one page with the big image, is that your, it's not the home page. Right? That's your profile. Profile page. Okay, got it. So is there a way to, is this always the way this works? Like, are you doing this customizable for your, I mean, like, instead of just sending it <laughs> Ladies, you're being a little distracting over there, please. The question was, are you asking about how to rearrange like the boxes and such? You know, we're getting really close to the end of the day, and there's still plenty that I can answer about Twitter. Um, but yes, you will see, everyone's going to see trends, maybe not the same trends, for various reasons that we're running out of time for. But overall, this design that we all have here, we all have it, basically. Yeah. I know we have questions, but let me finish my last ideas here because we're running toward the end of the day. The last thing that I want to talk about with Twitter is hashtags. Yes. We hear that all the time with hashtag with Twitter. So a hashtag basically is a keyword. So that sounds like anticlimactic, but a hashtag is a keyword. A moment ago, I searched for the keyword vegan cookies. Is that a hashtag? No, because a hashtag also uses the hash mark, which is the little symbol right there, which is shift three on your keyboard. Hashtag is a keyword, uses the hash mark. No spaces. It, no spaces, no special characters. The purpose is links everyone Every, links every tweet using that hashtag together. So it's like a topic. I'll show you how in a moment, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a tweet and I'm going to add a hashtag. Then that tweet is basically connected to every other tweet that uses that hashtag. We can make our own hashtags. Or we can piggyback on, or we can piggyback on other, on existing hashtags. <coughs> hashtag is a keyword and it's an active link. One to three hashtags is enough. Hashtag, I mean, uh, spammers abuse this and put 10 hashtags because it's 10 keywords. And they think, someone's going to find one of my keywords. Let me put 10 keywords. Let me put 20 keywords. Well, that's a spam tactic. And I'm saying you as a legitimate business want to be very discerning and between one and three. If one keyword, if one hashtag is enough, uh, then that's fine. Two is okay, three is my limit, and once you start adding more than that, well, you're taking space away from you to write something meaningful and just putting a keyword. Then you're starting to get spammy. When you say one to three is enough, one to three is enough what? For each tweet or for all your tweets? Or is it a way? Per tweet. Per tweet. If one hashtag works on that one tweet, that's fine. If I need up to three, three is the max. But it's going to be per tweet. Every tweet can have a different hashtag, a different topic, a different keyword. So the thing is, if I wanted to put a 
Let me finish my thought and then I'll take questions. So um, the way that I would use it is, uh, I'm on my home screen here and you always have the ability to um, to tweet at the top right corner, whatever screen you might have ended up in, you always have the, the tweet icon at the top right. Let me click on that, then I can compose a tweet. And again, we didn't get that direct on what exactly to share, but once we talk about the other networks, we'll see that they all relate. But let's say I wanted to share a tweet here um, in that I have something like sale this Saturday. Get all our cupcakes 50% off. Use code cup01 on our website. And then of course I put the address to my website. It will become an active link and people will be able to click on it. So I'm giving a coupon and a link and whatever I create on Twitter or any network, I still think about it in terms of, like I said earlier, uh, think in terms of um, post content that your audience cares about. So if I've got this cupcake company, I think people that have followed me care about buying cupcakes. So I'm going to write, hey, cupcake sale and then a coupon and a link. As for the hashtag, well, right now I have zero followers. No one's going to see it. But as I said, I'm going to first try to share content before building followers. Um, right here. Share content first, then try to get followers. And as a beginner, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, three to five tweets or share three to five tweets post three to five tweets before trying to get followers if you have zero tweets there's nothing to entice people to follow you so if you have at least a few tweets that give people a flavor about what your business is about that will entice them more perhaps to click that follow button so I could do three today, I could do one today, one tomorrow, I could do five today and I'm done. Maybe it's so much fun I'll do two today and three tomorrow and four tomorrow after that. Whatever, I need content to entice people to follow me. So such as this tweet that I'm about to share, I didn't share something like, uh, you know, for breakfast I had pancakes. You know, not that kind of share, that's the personal version of social media. Maybe if I'm creative I could say, we had a great, uh, we had a great um, wheat flour pancake today. Come to the shop to to buy your own. You know, I can be creative, and this is the part where I can't teach you exactly what you need to tweet about or post on Facebook. It's about your product, your brand, and such. But always think in terms about how can you entice people to reply, to favorite, to click, to follow you. And because I have zero followers, no one sees this. If I put in a hashtag, which is shift3, and I think um, cupcake. As I start typing cupcake, it's going to suggest to me the cupcake tag people are using, cupcakes for cancer, cupcake wrapper. People are using this hashtag. So I'll say, OK, I'll use cupcake. Maybe how about um, healthy, healthy food? Remember, hashtags, hashtags have no spaces. So the only hashtag here is healthy. I wanted healthy food, so no space. That becomes a hashtag. It's a hashtag when it changes color. If it's plain black text, it's not a hashtag. After I tweet this in a moment, and people go up to the search box, you can't see it here, but when you go to the search box in Twitter and they search hashtag healthy food, my tweet could show up for them. That's the whole point of these hashtags. Using keywords, 
using topics that people are searching for to help me get found. People then always ask, is there a, is there a website that tells me all the, all the hashtags? No. These hashtags are always, they're, they're fluid. They're always being invented and creating, created and forgotten and reused and repurposed. There's really, you're, you'll find websites that have hashtags. But this is just changing so much, don't, don't even bother with that. What I would say is, think of keywords, think of topics, start to type it, and it will suggest for you here what might be a good hashtag. We had eaten breakfast. Vegan London, vegan blogger. So as you write a hashtag, it'll suggest to you hashtags, and therefore perhaps pick a hashtag that's listed here. So yes, this is a lot to mention at this point, and Twitter hashtags are important, and we'll be touching on hashtags again because Google Plus has hashtags, Instagram has hashtags, Facebook has hashtags, they've all got hashtags, they all work the same way, which is to put a keyword on a post. And if you're judicious, one to three keywords that describe what your post is, that could help you get found. I will tweet this. And now if someone were to search for healthy food, if you guys search for hashtag healthy food, no spaces. On the live view, because this is just, you know, top view is what was the hottest tweet that had that hashtag, but live is what's happening right now. So my, uh, my tweet probably will be there and in a moment. So I know we have questions, but I won't be able to take them because the class is going to end in five minutes. And um, I want to wrap up the class by saying that, yes, there's a lot to learn here. As I said, I could teach Twitter nonstop a month. So there's my tweet right there for the whole world to see. But we need to wrap up at this point because when we come back next time, we're going to talk about Google+. Plus. We're going to see that some of the things we talk about Google+, Plus are similar to the things that we've talked about with Twitter, and therefore they all relate to each other. So if I didn't cover every single thing about Twitter, we're out of time. And when we get back to talk about the next network, we will cover even more concepts. At this point then, um, I'm going to put my notes that I wrote into the network folder before we all get out of our seats, please. Let me uh, remind everyone where the network folder is at.